This episode is sponsored by ReadyMade RC and DroneFrames.com. Hi guys, um, wasn't really expecting to be doing a video this evening, uh, I was just coming here to do a little bit of work on the copters and I thought, you know what, I should probably video this uh, and let you guys know what I'm doing. Uh, I've been flying the DRQ250, or Mini D as it's also known, with the, the Open Pilot CC3D from ReadyMade RC. Now I'm so impressed with it uh, that I want to try it on my tricopters. I'm a real tricopter fan. We've got a Backbones and a Fortis Airframes Titan, uh, which is a you know, they're both fantastic tricopter frames. Um, and I like this so much that I thought I'd give it a go on a tricopter. Uh, and it's it's fell in very well with <coughs> the arrival. Of a couple of KK 2.1s. Now I ordered these, sorry, 2.1.5s. Uh, now I ordered these a couple of weeks ago, kind of forgot about it as you do, and they arrived in the post the other day. So I thought, what better way to test the new KK 2.1.5 than to put it on this little DRQ 250? Now I've been flying it with a a certain configuration for a while. Those of you that have been watching the videos will have seen my 2.4 control link set up with the extension lead. Um, you'll have seen these in the range test videos. Um, we actually got 2.4 orange RX on a DX6i to go 4.2 miles. Um, if you didn't see that episode, I'll pop a link up here, and these aerials were from technic.co.uk, they're really cheap, with this receiver, uh, and the aerial and the other bits, the upgrade was about 40 quid, 4.2 miles on 100 milliwatts from a DX6i, that might be worth a look if you're interested, anyway, so I digress, put those to one side, oh, uh, I was flying with this on here, with a 2.4 and if, if I wobble that about for you it, it, it kind of carries on wobbling for a couple of seconds uh, and someone said to me the other day surely won't that make the flight controller freak out a little bit and I think I was noticing a little bit of that so I thought I'd go for a reconfigure the 2.4 long range setup is going to go on the bottom of the uh, the F450 with the RCT800 arms. So we're going to give ourselves a much more solid, robust control link in 2.4. Going to put the aerial out at the bottom uh, because majority of the time the copter is going to be up in the air. So that's going to get swapped over to there. I've gone for the easy UHF link um, on the uh, the DRQ250, and we never go a million miles. Uh, with the backbone so we're just going to put um, one of these on here um, with uh, just the head of the 2.4 system not with the whip and everything literally with the head so that will leave that nice and compact on the uh, the backbones flight test backbones so quite a bit coming up we've got the 2.1.5 follow-up on the DRQ We've got the CC3D coming on the flight test backbones. See how that goes on the tricopter. Quite excited about that. And uh, we're going to make some modifications to this. So far, these RCX Hobby motors, they are the 421521 650kVs. We're only running them on gem fan props, but so far, I am massively impressed with those. They were $16 a corner. $16. Incredible. Uh, and for the money, they're very, very good so far. Um, you know, are they going to be good for longevity? 
only time will tell. But at sixteen dollars a piece, um, you know, it's worth a go. I noticed Hobby King have just bought out a gimbal as well, so I might actually sell my tarot and get that in for review. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that. One of the new Hobby King 2 axis, I think it's a Quantum 2 axis uh, gimbal for GoPro. We might get that in and give that a whirl. Um, so, what else? Uh, when I ordered these RCX motors from my RC Mart, I picked up some 5.3 carbon props now these were on their website and i thought hmm, why not um these cheapo gem fans are doing the trick uh and quite often enough you know if you're pranging around um you know you, you're gonna sort of land carry on um but if for instance you're not using landing gear like i am and you spin up your motors where there's grass the grass with the with the speed that they spin the grass is actually enough to damage the prop um and i do quite a lot of landing and then retaking off again at the moment because i'm a bit of a noob 250 pilot so i thought i'd treat myself to some um carbon props so we're going to be testing those as well uh, as well I'll let you know how these go. These were really cheap, uh, and they seem to be a relatively good quality, um, and they should be a direct fit for these little motors. So keep your eyes peeled for this. Once the uh, reconfiguration of the DRQ250 is done, I will be putting these on after the first test flights um, with a 2.1.5. Make sure it's all right with these cheap old gem fan props. And then we'll put these on. And not that these were a lot of money because they weren't. And I can't remember how much it was. So I'm going to put a, a little text up here so you can see how much they were. But these were pennies for carbon props. So there you go. I think that just about brings us up to date um, with the projects. I thought as I was stripping all this stuff down and reconfiguring it. And we've got a 2.1 going in here. And the... CC3D going in there and the long range 2.4 link going on the quadcopter. I thought it would probably be time um, for me to do a little video. Before I go though, as you know, we've been working on the night drone, which is a night vision drone, that, uh, sorry, drone, <coughs> a night vision toy copter, because that's what these are, they aren't drones. Um, and this is our platform for that and we're getting some fantastic results but that HPI guy has just posted his first video of this uh, of his night toy night vision copter um, out flying around and he's got some fantastic results I've seen both footage the route that we're going will give you a lot more range and a lot more light and we also know a UK supplier that sells the cameras. He shows you how to take the IR cut filter off of the camera, uh, which is great. But we actually know a UK supplier that sells the same camera as uh, Richard's using in his video without the IR cut filter. So you haven't got the stressful um, taking it off, putting a solder on there and a soldering iron and heating it up and pulling it off. And as the solder got all over the board, um, I did this once with Tony from our channel and it was a really stressful thing. We managed to do it, but it, oh, it was horrible doing it. Didn't enjoy it and not something I'd want to repeat. So the UK seller is called Shaw24. I'll put a link in the description box. I'm buying my gear from them at the moment. The service is good and the prices are pretty good. They've got a whole range of gear dedicated towards night vision, hence why they do the cameras with the IR cut filter off. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, click this link if you're on YouTube on a PC. Go and have a look at Richard's video, which is very, very good. If you're not on youtube take a look in the description box below this video and there'll also be a link to richard's video there where you can see his first attempt at night vision fpv 
So that's about it. I'm out Barnard for RCTV UK signing off. Bye for now.